welcome to another episode of whatever this is. Um, so like five years ago, I used to do a, uh, back when it was only on Vimeo, Vimeo was all the rage. I did a little art critique show thing. People sent me artwork and then I critiqued it. Um, I stopped doing it, um, cause I thought who wants to, <laughs> who wants to watch that? But I thought I'd give it another shot to see what you guys reckon. Um, so yeah, put a shout out on Facebook, said, send me your stuff. Got a bunch of images. And so I'm going to be critiquing five of them in this episode. All right. This first image here comes from a Dave Putnam. Um, so let's, uh, let's get into it. And hello from my first ever green screen down here in the bottom corner. I know it's not perfect, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Hopefully it doesn't fall down because it's like balanced on bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, thank you for sending in your image at such short notice. Um, first of all, looking at this, I can go, yeah, this is this is a cool idea. Like it's, you know, in terms of like blender renders of the community, yours is past the 60 to 70 percent mark. You're definitely above average, which is uh, which is cool. Right. It's good to know where you are. Um, there are things I like about this image and things that I don't like. Um, and as with all the images we're going to be critiquing. So let's start with the things I don't like. Um, so the, first of all, the noise on the coffee beans, these things right here, they feel too noisy. The, the bump mapping is just too intense. And also I feel like the noise in scale is too small. So you've got too much detail in that noise there. If you look at some real photos of coffee beans, as I'm, I'm sure you have, um, I had a look before and I know that they do range in different types of noise because I guess some can be more roasted versus others. But as a whole, I feel like most coffee beans are a lot smoother. So you get a lot more of a smoother reflection to it um, and more of a, I don't know, a shiny look. At the moment, these look more like like little little mini walnuts almost. They've got that wrinkly, overly wrinkled feeling to them. Almost like they've been sitting in a roaster, a roaster, <laughs> I don't know if that's how they do it, for like way too long. So they're starting to like bubble and crisp. Yeah, I'm sure you get it. So I, I dial that back. Um, now for, I mean, the, the concept is okay, right? You've got, at least the eye has somewhere to go. It's sort of drawn into the coffee cup, which is, uh, which is nice. But as a whole, I don't feel like this image says anything special, right? Um, there are hundreds of these sorts of images already online that have been taken with, with cameras. So it's just sort of a stock, stock photo, right? I feel like you're using the 3D medium. You could do so many more interesting things. Um, now it's fine if you just want to make something that looks nice, that looks like a photo, that's, that's totally fine. But I have a look at, and so I, if I were you, I would go to 500pix.com and I would type in coffee beans and I would just browse through those images. And basically you get to see how world-class photographers would approach the topic of coffee beans. And you can just get a bunch of different ideas, different compositions. Obviously this would be when you start the scene, but you know, you could also do it now. Um, yeah. Um, now the other thing, and this is probably the one that's, that's I mean, if you wanted like low hanging fruit, the easiest way to get some quick fix fix this background. I don't know what the background is. Like, are we looking into the the eye of Mordor, like staring into the gate of hell or something? I don't know what's going on in the background there. It's like the rest of the scene is this like photo reel coffee table. You've got some wood, you've got the beans and then bam, flaming hell right behind. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I suspect that you probably weren't sure what to put there, so you thought maybe an abstract style background. Now, you can go abstract style, but it has to make sense for the scene. So the rest of the scene has to reflect some abstractness to it, which it currently doesn't. If I were you, I would choose some very muted, subtle wood, and I would just make this whole thing like a flat wooden wall, something like that, um, or, or going that way, whatever you want, right? And that would match the rest of it. it the, the point is, is that you don't, you don't really want to draw attention to it. You want to keep the focus all here. And that background right now is really throwing it off. Um, it's also ruining the whole color scheme of it. It's just way too warm. You don't have any other, uh, like, I, I don't know. It's just this red and you got the brown of the beans. It's, it's just all too much. Um, 
So those are some things I would change. You might also consider cropping it because you've got a whole bunch of stuff up here where nothing is going on. So you could consider cropping it. In fact, I do actually like that a lot nicer. Um, and from a personal standpoint as well, I would probably not go with this shallow depth of field. Like depth of field is nice, but this is way too shallow because you can really only see this area <laughs> of it, right? The rest of it is all out of focus. So I would, I would at least double it, you know, stretch it out to at least here and here or something like that. Um, and also finally to end on, I feel like some of these coffee beans are very oddly placed, like specifically those two. That one should have probably fallen down there and that one should be leaning on something underneath it down there. Um, but those are just a couple of nitpick things. So there you go, Dave. Thank you for sending it in. Next image. This one comes from a George Termanids or Termanid, Termanides. Sorry, I'm terrible, especially with last names. Um, but anyways, thank you, George. Um, I actually had a look at your art station gallery because you sent it into the Polygon monthly uh, selection thing. So uh, I've had a look at your images before and uh, they're really nice. So when I first looked at this, I was like, oh man, how am I going to critique this, right? But, and that's because when you first look at it, it's like, oh wow, this is like, technically speaking, this is a, a really nice image. However, artistically speaking, compositionally speaking, other things like that, there's a lot to actually say about it. Uh, a lot of ways that, that could be improved. So um, if you follow the Architecture Academy, um, there's something that I say in there, like when you're, when you're making a scene, you have to work out what the story of the scene is. And by that, I mean, who is actually using the scene? What demographic of person actually lives in this space? And actually, I have no idea who lives in this space, okay? Because it feels like a home. Like everything about it tells me that it should be a home. You've got a hammock, you've got, I don't know. It, it just, it feels like it is a home. But the furniture tells me it's a coffee shop, right? If this was a home, there's no way you would have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six tables all next to each other, um, all looking at each other, already set up in their, the right placemats and everything like that, right? It doesn't make any sense. And if it, was, uh, if it was a coffee shop, you wouldn't have a hammock there. Or you could, but I don't know, it, it just wouldn't feel right in that location. You could put a table there. You maybe have the hammock hanging up here or something as decoration. Um, also, if it was a coffee shop, I don't know, you would probably open this up, make the lighting a little bit more. Um, and actually, if it was a home, I think you would do the same thing. So that, that's actually going to be my next point, And that's that the scene feels too boxed in. Your eyes don't really have anywhere to go. They sort of look down here, they bounce off a couple of these things, and then we go, oh, yeah, nice. You might look up here and go, oh, there's some trees. Cool. But really, I want to see... I want to see the setting. I want to know what is outside of this, this, like what's behind the wall, right? So that's something I noticed, like I look at lots of architectural renders um, and the ones that really stand out, the ones that get everybody talking about them are the ones where you can see the setting. You can look beyond just the architecture and you can see the nature. You can see the hills in the background. You can see the street. You can see whatever it is. And that adds a lot more work to you as an artist, but it's something that'll it'll just make it look a lot nicer. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, you could, uh, if I were you, I'd open this up somehow. I'd make this look like, yeah, a big glass door, um, maybe some posts here or something. I mean, maybe it's not even glass. Maybe that's a walkway, you know? Maybe that's coming in from the forest and there's a walkway here. I don't know, but I, I still, I wanna be able to see out of it. So that would that would definitely help. This wall over here, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's just white. It's just white and there's nothing, you could make a different material there, wood, metal, something. Um, and actually the, the, what do you call it? The style of the architecture seems a little bit confused as well um, because down here, you've got a sort of minimalistic, open, modern styled uh, home, like some, you know, Ikea-ish styled uh, abstract furniture down there, which is nice. But then up here, you've got this circa 1800s 
street lamp, okay? It feels a little bit confused. So you've got to stick to one style, otherwise it feels very conflicted. So I would just get rid of these lamps because they're the only thing that, that don't match the rest of your scene. And I'd put something modern up there or just leave it open, I don't know. Um, those are just a few of my points there. Um, overall, like I said, when I first opened it up, I just thought I didn't know what to critique. But, because from a technical standpoint, it just looks phenomenal. So those were just some advice on artistic stuff. <laughs> so thank you, George. This next image comes from a Christian Pol Poljek. Poljek. Let me get a drink here, Christian. <clears throat> I'm just trying to see. Yeah. That green screen actually works okay. That's not bad. I might keep it for the tutorials. So this uh, this scene here looks. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a lot of work went into this. I know that um, from making architectural scenes. Um, and it's likely you started this kitchen scene, and then you realized halfway through, like, wow, adding all these decorations and place things, the, the cups, the jugs, the, the orange juice, the little things, the powerpoints. It's so much work, right? So props for getting this far through it, Christian. Uh, however, it is extremely white and extremely bland. Um, there's nothing natural to it. It's just so white. It's so sterile. It, it's almost hospital sterile. You know, when you walk into a hospital and it's just like, oh, death, <laughs> death and bleach, right? It's just, it's so white. Um, so some ideas that you could do to shake it up without, you know, spending too much time, you could use a different material. So you, you want to use something natural because right now there's, it's just so modern and clean. It's got to have something that relates back to nature. So I would use wood or stone. You could use a stone wall across here. You know, that one with the little the bricks that sort of come out at different heights or whatever. Uh, a lot of modern houses have nowadays. You could use that. Um, another idea is you could on these cabinets up there, I'm gonna run out of undo in a second. Uh, you could make this, instead of it being pure white, you could put a little inset and then make this frosted glass. And then behind it, you could just put in some very quickly made, uh, shelves and some plates stacked up. It doesn't have to be that high res cause it's just frosted glass. You can barely see them, but that would it would give you something else because right now there is so much of this image which is just a pure white color. Like, let me just, I'll show you, right? It's all of this. Like, it's almost 80% of the image is made up with this, this white stuff, right? It's just too much. So you got to add something in there, something natural. Um, also, I would say that you should have some focal element, something that your eye is immediately drawn to that's of some visual interest, some point to the scene. Um, so right now, the only things that really draw your eye are the bright saturation there and there, maybe the contrast there and here and a little bit up here. But overall, those things, when you look at them, they don't really say much, just on their own. They're just sort of oddly placed. There's there's nothing really, really there. So because you don't have a window or something, actually, that's an idea. You could make this a window. I just thought of that. I think that could look really nice. Ooh, what was that? Okay. Um, but if you made this a whole window, like a long, a lengthways window, and then made an, uh, an exterior out there, like a garden, some greenery, that would really open the scene up. Um, you could just try it. Open it up in Photoshop and just like crop that area out there and just paste in a background. That's a really quick way to test out an idea. Um, and see how that goes. I think that could look really nice. Um, if you do do this, by the way, Christian, let me know. Uh, it would be cool to see if you uh, if you update it in any way. Um, so yeah, that's cool. By the way, props for using polygon textures. Hey, one of us, one of us. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Christian. Uh, let me pull this up. I got some notes here. Some of these. I want to make sure that I get them all get them all down. Okay. So um, for this one by Nate. Nate Ryan, thank you for sending this in. First thing I saw when I look at this, um, well, first of all, it's a really cool idea, um, really cool concept. I mean, I've seen these sorts of images before. A lot of people do these Mad Max, end of the world, zombie vehicle sort of things. Uh, it's very cool. Um, but in your case, the, the biggest glaring thing that I see when I, when I open this up is, and it's very common, for people that do texturing. 
uh, the texturing makes no sense. <laughs> so it, it feels like it doesn't matter, but it's really all that matters when it comes to texturing is it has to make sense. Like how did the, the, the dirt get up here? Like that little patch right there, but not this patch right here, right? It, the, the way that the dirt has clung to the car makes zero sense. It's like somebody dipped their hand in glue, rubbed it sporadically over the car, maybe dipped their body in it and sort of jiggled around on it and then threw sand at it. And it appeared in little clumps and patches, a lot there, a lot there, a lot there. Like, like why would there be dirt underneath that pipe, but not on the pipe itself, you know? It just feels a little bit off. So if you wanna have a really good example, look at Marek Denko's um, steampunk style end of the world vehicle. His is really consistent. Across the whole thing, the texturing just makes a lot of sense. But really what you should do is look at just Google photos of rally cars and see how the mud applies to it or, or desert rally cars. See how the dirt applies to it. In my opinion, having a look at this, I think that you would see a lot of dirt over the front here. Like the whole front of the car there would just be coated in dirt because that's where the driving force is. That's where a lot of the sand would be hitting. You would see it all up there, a little bit up here. Um, the window would have like a dirt window pattern across it like that, where the windscreen wipers were able to wipe it, but you would see it clumped up in the edges there. Um, you would see a lot up here, a lot on the mirror there, and unless it went through a puddle or some mud, you might see it splashed up on the sides there like that. You'd see it caught in the crevices of the pipe there. You know, I'm sure you get the picture. That's that's where the dirt should be, but right now it just, it makes no sense. The tires are pretty good, but that's probably because tires generally, they sort of appear everywhere. It's just spinning around constantly. So it sort of makes sense, um, that uniform sort of look. Um, but yeah, so that's that's really the biggest thing to say. If you if you just focused on the texturing, I think it could really, really look special. Um, yeah, um, a couple of other things. I would say that the bullet holes here on the window, I've scribbled around it so it's hard to see. Oh, look, I can erase. Hey. Uh, yeah, those bullet holes, they look very flat. Like they've just sort of been tagged onto it and it's like white painted on glass. Doesn't look very realistic. Um, I, I, but that, that's common, like a lot of shattered glass pitches, they just look a eh, little bit off. We're actually working on some for Polygon, we're trying to make some proper shattered glass texture for bullet holes and different things like that, based off displaced glass, we're going to like model it and stuff, should should look really cool. But anyways, that's that's one thing I would critique on. I mean, the modeling is fantastic, so I would put the same amount of effort you've put into the uh, modeling, put that into the texturing. And honestly, I think if I were you, I would try to use Substance Painter because just trying to do this in Blender is gonna be a nightmare because having to paint each object and then change the maps for each map to make sure that it matches that map, it's it would just be a nightmare. Substance Painter allows you to paint across multiple channels at the time. Um, Quixel, I think, does the same thing. It's a bunch of different texturing apps out there. I think you should give it a shot. 30 day free trial, you got nothing to lose. Um, that's my advice, Nate. Thank you for sending it in. All right, the final image here comes from a, what the heck was that? All right, feedback. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> We're doing feedback already. Uh, this one comes from an Abna. So Abna, thank you for sending this in at such a short notice. Um, okay, so. First thing I say when I look at this, I mean, I, I haven't done too many characters myself, so, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But from what I've, from what I've uh, researched and what I already know on the topic, um, anatomy is everything when it comes to characters. Um, and it's not, you're not the only one that's done this. This is the most common problem across all CG characters is the poor anatomy. So this guy, the wrinkles in his face, the muscles, the, the fat pockets around the eyes, none of it really makes sense. Um, so it, it's a common problem. So yeah, if you don't understand the anatomy very well, you can start putting in features where there shouldn't be them. And it can just get this very wishy-washy, rubbery sort of feel to it. So unfortunately, like there's not, it, it's not like a magic bullet, like, hey, just get rid of those, that little bit of wrinkle there or, or whatever. Um, it's something like you got to research it. Um, I did a, a facial anatomy course by Scott Eaton, 
Um, it was actually very boring. <laughs> I don't recommend the course, uh, but I haven't found another equivalent that's, uh, that's good. Let me know if you guys know of any. But uh, yeah, you learn a lot about you know where where everything should be, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. This this guy. Um, if I saw him in real life, I would probably reach behind his head and pull off his rubbery mask to to see his real face underneath it. Because yeah, it looks like a loose bag of skin. You just you got wrinkles. You've got like like an accordion pattern of wrinkles like everywhere. It's like uh, it's like it's like a ball bag. It's just, uh, it's, yeah, they're, they're sort of just going everywhere. There doesn't really seem to be an understanding of where there would be. Um, so, for example, you should have, um, what are those? They're called the, the jowls, right? The jowling fat, um, even though that's not really the name of it, but it's sort of like a pocket that appears under here and at the corners of your mouth. Like for an old person, that's where the fat pocket should appear, but you don't have that at all. So it's... It's a little bit odd. Even though it's a cartoony style character, you still need to have an understanding of where the anatomy is. Like, look at Tintin. If I were you, I'd just look at references of people that have already done it really, really well. So the Tintin movie, they've got a realistic but cartoony style look to their characters, and it looks great. So I would copy their style, essentially. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, there's a couple of minor things. I could say that the fabric on the shirt here, it looks like... It's reflective, like is it, I think you've got like a glossy shader on top of the fabric when really it should just be noise. Um, so I would just use a fabric noise with a diffuse fabric on it. It just feels very blurry and just flat. You've got no wrinkles in the shirt. It's, um, it's rather, rather odd. But if you want a really quick fix, something that would have the best impact on it, I would lose the background um, and make it just like a solid black or some slightly subtle gray with a bit of texture or something in the background there because um, that current, yeah, let me get rid of that. So that current wood or like, is he in a library? I don't know where he is. It, it just doesn't, it's, it's, it's too much uh, noise in the background because of the contrast and the brightness to it. Your eyes are sort of conflicted as to which one to focus on. Um, I mean, your eyes are drawn to the face, but your eyes are also bouncing off the background there when you, they shouldn't. So I'd fix that. The hair is a little bit choppy as well. You know, doesn't really seem to um, make that much sense. Um, but yeah, so that would be my advice for you, Abner. If you found this video helpful, please let me know by giving it a like. Um, because honestly, I, I only do these videos um, for you guys if, if you guys enjoy them. So if you don't, if you don't want to see any more of these, give it a thumbs down. Um, <laughs> you probably wouldn't make it this far through the video if you did. But anyways, I'm interested in hearing your feedback. So let me know in the comments. So if you would like to send me an image for the next episode, you can do it by going to the Blender Guru Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Blender Guru. And then you can post an image to the group. Basically, click post, publish, whatever. Um, include a short description of the image if you want. And include the hashtag BG critique so that I can find it later on. Um, and that's basically it.